Okay, this is one of the most important tutorial videos I've ever made. This is a case where we have some failing restorations that were previously done, some debonded veneers, really beautiful initial uh, feldspathic restorations, crowns on 7, 8, 9, and 10, with veneers on the cuspids and um, back to the premolars. I did a diagnostic wax up in ExoCAD for this particular patient who happens to be a dentist, and I virtually prepared the model a little bit and um, designed a mock-up where we did some simulated crown lengthening on six, seven, and eight, just very minor. And we waxed and sculpted the smile um, with the patient with me in the chair, giving me feedback on, on how they would like their smile to look. And we then 3D printed the models and, and actually printed a mock-up to try in on the patient's mouth to make sure that it was something that he would like before we actually committed to treatment. And one of my least favorite things to do is replace existing dental work because you never know what's underneath. But um, here is the mock-up just tried into the patient's mouth. And now we are on the day of tooth preparation. And so what I did was I took the original file where I did my mock-up and I actually now am adding models to the case of the final preparations on prep day. So here we are pinning my prep model to my pre-op model that I already did the wax up on. So here's the tooth preparations. And in ExoCAD, we're going to do a, a, um, a line model with the best fit matching. And so I'm selecting common points. It's nice when you have a case like this where you have all these unprepared tooth surfaces that you could use for um, marking dots between the two separate and distinct models. Again, we reopened the saved ExoCAD case from a few months ago when we did the mock-up. Now the patient's in the chair and they have tooth preparations done. And I want to design my temporaries direct to prep. And what that means is I'm using this alignment feature to now align my tooth preparation scan to my original mock-up scan. And so here we have a leopard pattern with a good um, indication of a proper alignment. And now that I do that, and this is kind of, I would say, one of the most important workflows that I use in my practice, whether it's a 10 unit case like this or, or a full arch case. This is how I'm able to do day of preparation designs in a matter of 10 minutes where I'm not redesigning cases. And so now what I need to do is export my upper model. So I'm going to I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to save scene as and I'm going to go down and I'm going to save this as an OBJ which is the color file and I'm going to call it you know merged upper so that I know that this is a merged file to my preoperative wax up and then I'm going to turn on my lower jaw and I'm going to save my lower jaw which is pinned <clears throat> to now my prep scan and this is my original lower scan that I did for my mock-up. I'm just gonna call that merge lower, um, save that as a OBJ or an STL file, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. <clears throat> and you're gonna pick original coordinate system when you save these, that's key, ultra critical. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna save my um, software make sure my case is saved, everything's been pinned, and I'm gonna to go to my um, dental DB, and I'm going to load in the object browser, in the file, those two newly created models, the, the merged lower and the merged upper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste them into the project file, and I'm going to rename them. This is ultra critical. I'm gonna rename them with the long code that ExoCAD has given for this project with the dash. <clears throat> so it's the original code there. I'm gonna copy and paste that and I'm gonna rename the file. Um, you have to put the dash and then you have to call it upper jaw and lower jaw exactly. And if you don't call it exactly that, this won't work. And if you didn't save them as original coordinate system, this won't work. So now what I'm gonna do that I have them there, you could see them, they're gonna pop up now, my prep scan and my bite. What's really cool, I could duplicate the case and hit scan data and design files. I'm gonna duplicate the case and now I'm gonna change the prescription. I'm gonna do veneers on the, the molars and premolars all the way up to the cuspid and I'm gonna connect them for one temp 
And then I'm gonna do the other segment as veneers as well and connect all those. And then I'll do in, uh, uh, crowns in the anterior because those were crown preps previously endodontically treated. And I'm gonna go to 3D print here and now I'm gonna connect those. So I'll have three segments of provisionals, the posterior up to the canine, the front four and the posterior. And on all your design files, they're instantly merged to your prep, so you have no designing to do. All you do is you come in here and you quickly mark your margins of all your uh, veneers. In this case, there is no prep veneer on um, the molar here. There are some prepped veneers here. And again, the patient had existing veneers that were debonded from this case. They had um, some existing crowns that had recurrent decay underneath. And so here I am um, marking my margins on my premolar veneers and then onto the cuspid veneers here. And then we have full coverage circumferential crown preps on the laterals and, and the centrals. So I'm just going around. Um, this is kind of a real world messy case. Um, again, one of my least favorite things to do is to cut off existing work and, and try to make nice out of existing preparations. Um, but that's often what we're faced with. And so here we are um, marking our margins on each individual restoration. This is the day of preparation. Patient's sitting here watching me. In this case, this patient happens to be a dentist. Um, and so what's really magical about this is once you mark your margins, you then pick your path of insertion for each individual restoration. You could combine path of insertions for splint attempts and all that kind of stuff. But here, I'm actually designing these individually right now, and I'm going to now pick paths of insertions here. The software automatically kind of does that for you. And we're just making sure we have very good uh, margin gaps and ramp settings. If you guys know, veneers are around 0.2 for the from margin and about 1.2 for um, the spacer because we're gonna uh, need that. And the crowns are a little bit different for the, the margin settings and, and things like that. But now look at the design is completely done. And all we do here is we adapt down to our margins and then we go ahead and cut our proximal contacts in occlusion. So we adapt and now we just fine tune everything just ever so slightly here. We're gonna fine tune our occlusion. We're going to um, get our proximal contacts to be just right. And the whole entire design process is literally about 10 minutes because it's all been done before. Patients already approved everything. And now it's just a matter of fine tuning a few things here or there. And this is also how you could do full arches. Um, and this is also kind of trying in the design one last time before we go to milling and we, we could do any kind of modifications here. Every tooth is still editable. You could still move the teeth, smooth them. Um, they're not fixed or locked in and it's just almost instantaneous how we're able to do this um, on the day of tooth preparation by recycling a mock-up design and not doing like copy mirror, which never really works well, or pre-op copy, which never really works well. These are the original unadulterated designs from the mock-up from ExoCAD. And, and that has been kind of absolutely a game changer, um, not having to copy mirror teeth and pre-op copy teeth and redesign and then pre-op copy, uh, which never really works. And so now here I'm just fine tuning my proximal contact surfaces for my provisional prosthetics. And even though I'm gonna splint them together, I was still spending the time to design um, perfect proximal contacts because with just a click of a button, I can convert these to single units and go ahead and mill them if the patient loves the provisionals. Um, again, this is definitely something that has changed everything that I do with my larger prosthetic cases. Um, I used to do pre-op copies and copy mirror workflows and they never seemed to work well where when we started to transition about a year ago to doing our full mouth cases like this, where we're, we're pre-waxing everything down to the micron and then using that original wax up to its full completion in our new design by kind of hacking the software like this and renaming files and then duplicating the case. It's been completely revolutionary. That's it, that is the design in a nutshell. And now we have our merged files and we could now export each individual segment and we have three segments here and now we're ready to go for 3d printing i'm going to throw these in my um, pro 55s on the crown build plate these will print in 15 minutes just like this in those three segments and then i'm going to go ahead and put them on 
as the provisional prosthetics and get a true preview of what my final prosthetics might look like. Okay, I hope this really helps. Again, follow this video closely and you will save hours of design time from going from temporaries to mock-ups to finals. I hope this helps.